How about we talk about how we had our best March ever in the history of our team, despite our market being down 38%. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I am your host, Matt Smith, founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate. Here's a reminder, this podcast is a movement. All or Nothing in Real Estate as a brand is a movement to give back to the industry that has given so much to me and my family. And as as almost always, as most of the time, <laughs> joining me is Colin. Colin, thanks for being here. Hey, yeah, I'm happy to be here. To, I'm excited about today's topic. Yeah, today's going to be a good one, man. Um, so... Colin and I were we're both doing seventy five hard right now, mm-hmm. and we were talking about hey, what can we talk about next? And uh, I said, well, how about we talk about what's relevant? And we started started talking about the marketplace, what's relevant in the marketplace, and it got me thinking like, how about we talk about how we had our best March ever in the history of our team, despite our market being down thirty eight percent. And Colin's like, I think that would be a good topic. <laughs> um, and so he really challenged me to think about and break that down into bullet points. And so today we're going to break down how we had 99 homes under contract in the month of March, our best March ever in the history of the company, mm-hmm. despite our market being down 38%. And so we're going to go tactical. We're going to break that down. And some of those things we're going to talk about is database management, how to manage your database, how what adjustments we have made to have those improvements in our business. We're going to talk about um, scripting, the scripts that we use, the dialogues we use to uh, set these appointments, to get these under contracts, how to identify and plug holes in your business. I think there's a there's an art form to that as you're growing, as you're scaling, especially as the market is shifting. We'll talk about the actions that we took 90 days ago and how we have the mindset of what we did 90 days ago affects our business moving forward. Um, and also, last but definitely not least, is the skill set of the agent. Mm-hmm. How we are continually developing those skill sets of the team um, of the agent to in order to better serve our clients 100 percent. like all of these things add up to how we're able to no matter what the market is thrive in that and you can too yep. um, we're happy to th- these aren't secrets we're not gatekeeping we're happy to to give them out there no that's again this is this is to give back right yeah. this is to share um someone has shared with me to, to get to where I'm at. And it's it's my privilege to share with others, right? Yeah. So um, I know there'll be value here. There'll be tactical takeaways for everyone, no matter where they're at in their business. At least that's the goal. Um, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube or visual, um, what do you think of our new set? Colin, uh, <laughs> yeah. Colin's mixed it up a little bit, got us a new set, new setup, and uh, chair's a lot more comfortable. I'll give you that. <laughs> Way more comfy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think. Um, but Colin, where do you want to start, man? Let's dive in. Let's dive straight into the database uh, management side of things, keeping track of everything that's um, that needs to be kept track of. Yeah. So I think um, I think that a lot of a lot of team leaders, a lot of agents get stuck in the daily grind mm-hmm. of going through and um, if they have a database, hopefully they're managing it, right? But there's always ways that we can step back, have that bird's eye view, have the 30,000 foot view and say, what can what adjustments can we make to make sure that we're, our efforts are being put in the right spot, mm-hmm. right? If I were to summarize the importance of a database, it is calling the right people with the right conversations in the right time, mm-hmm. right? Like that is the goal of managing the database because if you're good in this business, lead generation is an easy part, right? It's easy to generate leads. Um, if you're struggling with that, let us know. Maybe we can do an episode on that because that is something that we absolutely thrive in. Um, it's the I think where agents struggle is not the lead generation part. It's more the lead conversion part. It's mm-hmm. the follow-up. It's the nurturing. It's the who do I call, what do I say. And all of that is encompassed in database management. And so one of the things we've really been working on is creating safety nets. Mm-hmm. Safety nets for the agents, safety nets for the team, safety nets for the clients. And so based upon our follow-up cadence and our stages and what conversation we had, we have been creating ways for things, less things to fall through the cracks because no system's perfect, right? And instead of it being relying on 100% on the agent, we have created automations and systems to alert the agent when they're supposed to do something at a certain time Mm -hmm. with details of why they're supposed to do it and then also what they're supposed to say. And it gives an, an opportunity for the agent to talk to that opportunity to that lead in the right time frame mm-hmm. right so we create more hand raisers and then we have automations to allow alert the agents they're calling the right people that are raising their hand at the right time mm-hmm. in addition to that we have a safety net of if they're not able to because they're 
they're taking the day off, they're they've they're on vacation, or they're just overwhelmed showing clients or whatever it may be. Yeah. We have developed this system as a back end as a team to make sure that that client still gets served and someone else gets that hand raiser. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a combination of giving the agency opportunities at the right time, but also realizing that you have to serve the client first. And so what are you doing in your database and your organization to ensure that if someone raises their hand and needs help? that in your database that that gets taken care of in a timely manner mm -hmm. and someone knows what they're supposed to say, when they're supposed to reach out and can help that client. 100%. These new systems I've been able to be in for a lot of the meetings that we've put them together, they're completely changing the game because it's easy to have information overwhelmed that you're like, I've got to focus on this and this and this. And then you're a busy agent yep. who's not spending time on the things you need to. This is helping tunnel vision saying who needs the most help right now and what can I do immediately? It's that right next step. And it's like spoon fed. A hundred percent. Like it's not perfect. Right. But that's the idea behind it. Mm -hmm. Is And what I found was, um, let me tell on myself is that like, we need more action. We need to make more calls, call more people, more conversations. It's a contact sport. The more conversations you have, the more homes you sell, which is 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. But what if we could have help agents out by having the right conversations with the right people at the right time, right? And so instead of being the um, barking dog at the agents, hey, do more, do more, do more. Let me inspire you to do more because every time you take this activity that I'm asking you to take or encouraging you to take, you actually get a result. So you want to do more of it. Right. Instead of it. Um, and again, I, this is a sore subject for me because I hate it when people say you're going through a database and you're cold calling. Mm -hmm. They're a warm lead. If nothing else, they're a hand raiser. They got to your database for a reason. Yeah. Right. And so they're not cold calling, cold calling, go grab, go grab a phone book and start dialing. That's mm -hmm. cold calling. Right. Um, so there's a big difference. But I think what has happened as the progression of technology, the progression of of sales and the information that is available in today's technology in the world that we live in is that the old cold calling doesn't exist anymore. And the warm calling, calling the hand mm -hmm. raisers has become the new cold calling. Yes. And so um, you and I had a conversation about this yesterday on our walk, Colin, is I, 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 I'm working on top grading a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we have done is top graded our database yes. and top graded the agent's database. So if Colin's an agent on the team, he knows exactly who he's supposed to call today, mm -hmm. exactly what he's supposed to say. And if he gets caught up with that, he has a, another database of hand raisers that he can go through and access through a pond system that we created. Yeah. And so um, it's a... Uh, it's creating, finding those holes and plugging mm -hmm. those holes through database management has been a massive, massive game changer. Yeah. Well, and I'd say for everyone out there listening, if you don't have something like this, create something like this to say, what's that 20% that uh, of leads that I can focus on that's creating 80% of the results? Because you have a million things that you could be doing and a million different people that you could be contacting, but say, who's most important? Who's raising their hand? Who, yep. Who's been on the website? Who's Who's been reaching out? Who called? Those probably are the ones that you want to start well, with. Here's, yeah, 100%, right? Like, so we changed our language internally. We talked about speed to lead. I've said it from stages. I say it all the time in our sales meetings. Speed to lead is crucial. Like, just go look up the stats of speed to lead in real estate sales. The first five minutes is crucial. The difference in five minutes and 10 minutes is like 300% chance difference, right? Like, of getting a hold of the person. It's massive difference. Yeah. The number of salespeople that follow up less than three times blows my mind. It's like 98% or something crazy in one study that I read. And so like there is a lot. And I, instead of me being like, I need to find that unicorn agent that's going to be that 2% to follow up and that, that small percentage that can follow up and also have the speed to lead it at all times and always be available. What if we create systems mm -hmm. to where we encourage people, they're calling people that are raising their hands. So one of the ways that we are doing this is creating more hand raisers. Mm -hmm. So you do that through e-alerts, you do that through marketing, you do that through retargeting, you do that through providing value to your database that they keep coming in your system. Mm -hmm. And when they become a hand raiser, now you have a system on the back end that the agents are calling people that just recently raised their hand, not people that raised their hand six months ago. Yeah. Right. Because that's what they consider a cold call. And that, that gets very tiring because we're calling them during the day while we're at work, they're not at work, mm -hmm. and it wears an agent out. And so we are creating more opportunities. And so I think... Instead of lead speed to lead, we're calling it speed to opportunity. Mm. And so we don't talk about leads anymore. Of course, I check how many leads we're creating and all that. But what is the most important number that we've been tracking over the last 30 days is opportunities. Mm. Number of opportunities that are created. 
from a lead that's already in our database or from a lead that hasn't been in our database and we could just create it. Because I think what's most important is that we are engaging and enrolling in those opportunities we are getting, whether it's someone that revisited our site, mm-hmm. whether it's someone that saved a property, they looked at a property five times, they calculated a mortgage, um, they opened an email that was educational or responded to a value proposition we mm-hmm. sent out. Um, or inquired on our website, contact, whatever it may be, right? Request a home valuation. I could go on and on, yep. right? All of these marketing employees that you should be running, when you create those hand raisers, do you have an ironclad system that they get contacted in the first five minutes and your agents know, and if they're not able to, someone else can jump in and help? Mm-hmm. Imagine what your business would look like if every single opportunity like that got responded to in the first five minutes by someone that was ready, willing, and able to know what to say, how to say it, and was able to take that opportunity. 100%. There's two things I want to mention on that is that that builds momentum for the agents themselves because every call they're making, they're getting results. It's not this, like you said, the the cold calling in the afternoon, man, that's, you know, call number 17 that no, that I got hung up on or there's no answers. Instead, they're getting people who are excited, who have been raising those hands, their hands across the board. Um, And that, that just, that makes an agent excited and they're going to be able to close more. 100%. And yeah, so that goes back to, right, like an agent being deflated or inflated by their mm-hmm. calls. We want them to take the action and get positive results because that creates momentum, mm-hmm. right? And so what can we do to get them more positive results? We invest in their skill set, but we also are making sure they're calling the right people, right? Don't get me wrong. Like, please don't mistake what I'm saying as it's going to take less work in this marketplace. Like, I looked at our conversations in this month last year versus uh, last year versus this year. Mm-hmm. So this is our best month ever in under contracts, but it's also our most conversations we've ever had in the same month. Mm. So there's it's parallel, right? Yeah. It is still a contact sport, but who you are contacting matters. Mm-hmm. Not only for the results that you're going to get, but probably... More importantly, so if you're a team leader for the mindset and the inspiration of the agent getting those successes and those wins so they want to do more. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that there's a very parallel in both of those. And that's that's a system that and again, we're still contemplating how to perfect it. But that's something we've been really, really detailed on and working on. Um, In addition to those opportunities, speed to opportunity is huge. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our database management plan that we're really improvising and improving. Um, But. There's also a massive, massive hole in follow-up in people's database. Imagine what you, what would your, I'm going to ask you a question. If you're a single agent, if you're a team leader, it doesn't matter. Broker owner, it doesn't matter. What would your business look like if every single opportunity, I defined opportunity earlier, a hand raiser in your database, if every opportunity got responded to within five minutes of someone that has the skill set to, compl- to, to uh, have the right conversation, that's step one. Mm-hmm. If every single one of them was responded to in five minutes, what impact would that have on your business? Five minutes or less. Massive. Yeah. Let's add to that. What if you had a proven follow-up cadence based upon how you staged that lead, based upon how the conversation went, based upon how the showing went, how the listing appointment went, that a very, very clear guidelines of how the agent is supposed to follow up, mm-hmm. what they're supposed to say, how they're supposed to track it, and that agent is held accountable by the system, mm-hmm. meaning it tells them, hey, Colin, you're supposed to call this person yes. every week. And at seven days, you get notified, hey, have you called this person? Mm -hmm. You have a couple day leeway. But if you don't get if you don't call that person, now it goes to someone else as another opportunity for someone else to call them Mm -hmm. because we owe that to the client. Yes. What would your business look like if you followed up with everyone, the cadence you're supposed to follow up with and every opportunity you created got responded to in five minutes? How much better would your business look? Mm -hmm. That's better for everyone. Literally, the the agent, there's less stress on them. They can work harder if they want to, or they can uh, take that vacation and not have to worry about that piece. It serves the client better. 100%. Yeah, everyone wins. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. So that's, that's kind of a summary of database management. Is there anything else you'd like to go deeper on that? Uh, nothing additional that uh, I'd want to add other than just look at uh, your uh, database right now and say, how can I do this? Not that would be really nice, but how can I? Because we've done it and you can do it too. Yeah. It, it is possible. Yeah. So um, just full transparency, we use follow up, follow up boss, right? Mm-hmm. And follow up boss um, has automation systems and um, we have Slack notifications that are tied in and um, and we are using a third party integrations company to help build some of this stuff that is an automations company because it's just that important for us to invest to get this right. Um, but if, if you'd like to chat about it, I'm happy to chat, reach out to me um, and we're happy to happy to kind of give you an, a more in-depth overview. But it depends on your database, the size yep. of your team, what your cadence looks like currently. Right. But it is there is there are solutions possible. And what's crazy to me, Colin, is to see. 
the results we've had, we've been doing this for about 30 days. Mm -hmm. And usually things get worse before they get better. <laughs> yeah. But we've already had a drastic positive impact and we've made massive mistakes along the way. Right. right? Like we've not, we thought these people were getting notified and they weren't. Yeah. And like, so we've, we've made massive mistakes. Agents hadn't, didn't have full clarity or understanding because we didn't explain it well enough. And so they weren't following up properly. Right. We've had, you name the mistake, we've made it over the last 30 days. Mm -hmm. But despite all of that, with that being our focus of our database management, we still had our best month ever with the market being down 38%. You're like, what's it going to be like six months from now? Like, <laughs> it's going to be, dude. It's going to be life changing, and that's that's what I've I literally talked in our sales meeting about is that it's um it's amazing to see the momentum it's already created, and if we continue this buy in from the team and we continue perfecting the system because there's step two and three that I'm working on two mm -hmm. behind the scenes to create more hand raisers and more opportunities in addition to the hundreds and hundreds we're creating in addition to each and every week. Um, I think it'll be thousands very soon. And so like everyone's going to be calling people that are hand raisers. Mm -hmm. And I think what agents get tired of doing is, is cold calling. They get tired of calling people and not answering. Okay. They want to, agents are people, people, right? They want to have mm -hmm. conversations. They want to move the needle. They want to move them through the funnel. They want to talk to them about the market. They want to talk to them about buying or selling a home. And so as a team leader, I changed my focus into getting, instead of getting my agents to make more calls, mm -hmm. how can I tee them up to have better conversations and more conversations? Mm -hmm. And again, let's do that database management. Now let's move to the next part. Let's say that you guys do all of that. How do you ha teach your agents how to have the right conversations? And that's through scripts and dialogues. Right. So let's dive into scripting, right? Let's pretend that you have all of this. Uh, you've figured out where these holes are. You're creating these more hand raisers. Now, how do, what do we say to these people and how do we get everyone on the same page? Right. That goes through scripts and dialogues. And one of the crazy things for me, Colin, is that I used to be the biggest naysayer of scripts and dialogues. Really? Yeah. And it's it's because no one wants to be talking to a scripted salesperson. Mm -hmm. Like we've all had those calls from people mm -hmm. that are like following a script and they don't care about me. Mm -hmm. And they all they care about is getting their quota, having the conversation and making sure they check the box of their script. Right. So first and foremost, don't be that person. <laughs> right. Like I tell we have a, a new onboarding class and um, I told each and every one of them in a scripting class is guys, the script doesn't matter if you don't have a great conversation. Mm. It's especially hard when you're new and you're learning all of this. Yeah. Right. And so um, I'll give you a hack here in a second. That was an aha. I had in a coaching call yesterday for some clients and um, the, the conversation is so much more crucial than the script. Yes, you need to follow a general framework. Yes, you mm -hmm. need to ask the right questions. Yes, you need to answer, and then you need to ask another question. You need to acknowledge what they said and ask another question because mm -hmm. sales is about what you ask, not what you say, mm -hmm. right? Um, but in addition to that, all the, the framework of a script is designed to build rapport and build relationship. You have to mirror. You have to match. And I don't care. Like, I sold a lot of real estate without having any scripts. Because I knew how to have a conversation with people and make them feel important because mm -hmm. I cared and wanted to help them. You were building a connection. I just. based my question on their, my next question on their response because I was listening. Mm. What happens with scripts and where they go wrong is you want to say the next right thing mm -hmm. instead of understanding where they're at in their journey. Mm -hmm. And you have, to, you have to seek to understand before you can be understood. Too many salespeople talk at clients. They don't talk to them. Mm. You have two ears and one mouth for a reason. A good salesperson asks great questions. I would like for you to audit the last phone call that you had that you didn't set an appointment with if you're listening to this. And I want you to time. How much time were you talking and how much time were they talking? Mm -hmm. You want that to be as close as to 50-50 as possible. Because you want to still maintain authority and right. be that person that guides the conversation. Mm -hmm. You don't want them being 80%, right? We've all had those. <laughs> um, those aren't productive either. But it also, you don't want to be 80% and them only 20. You don't want to railroad the conversation. Mm -hmm. So you do that by asking great questions. And so um, here's, a, here's a hack that I had if you're onboarding new agents or maybe you're learning scripts and dialogues. Um, here's what we do in our onboarding. And so if you're a new agent listening to this on the team, um, here's the method behind the madness. Mm -hmm. Is day one, you call your sphere of influence that you bring, right? You get used to the phones when you're onboarding. Day two is we give you older leads in the database that we give you our ghost, ghost lead script, which is to revive old leads. The goal of that is to build that muscle mm -hmm. of taking those calls, getting uncomfortable. Like if you set an appointment with those, that's awesome, <laughs> right? But that's not the goal of that. That's not the, the point. That's right. But it's also to embrace the struggle. Mm -hmm. 
because what, guess what they want on day three after they failed miserably on day two? Their older leads, number, I'm setting them up for failure on purpose, mm-hmm. right? It's older leads that probably have already bought or sold or no longer interested, whatever. And they don't know what to say to these people. Mm-hmm. On day three, they're begging for a script. They, under, they now understand the importance mm-hmm. of scripts and dialogues and a framework of a conversation. They understand that if I'm calling these people, I need to know what to say. I need to be educated. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to guide this conversation in the proper way. Mm -hmm. Right. So instead of telling them that, I let them experience that. Yeah. Right. People don't people don't believe what you say. They believe what they experience. So Mm -hmm. how can we create the experience that they understand the necessity of a script instead of me just telling them, well, you need to learn a script, Colin. Mm -hmm. What if you experience some pain and you're like, Oh, now I understand, mm-hmm. and now I want this script. I need to role play versus me trying to force them to role play or force them to learn a script. Because as a new agent, you're excited. You're like, "All right, sweet real estate. Let me do this. I'll just call yep. people up and they'll buy a house." And it's like, that's not really yeah. how it, it goes. So it happens from time to time, yeah, right? Yeah. But that's not that's not a sustainable business model. No, and not the vast majority of yep. conversations you need to be able to have to be able to make 100%. those transitions. It's about building a relationship through follow-ups. And so I think for scripting, like everyone hopefully knows the LP Mama script. Mm-hmm. If not, reach out to me. I'll give you a copy of our LP Mama script. Um, it's pretty basic. It's location. It's price. It's motivation. It's um, agent. It's um, mortgage. So do you need a mortgage? And then it's also the last day's appointment, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so you ask questions based around what location are they looking at? What price point? What is their motivation to buy or sell? Um, are they already working with an agent? Mm-hmm. Do they need a loan? Or how much do they owe on their home, right? So you, you can flip that. And the last is you all obviously close for the appointment. Mm-hmm. Um, let me give you another quick tip here. Um, I'm just giving away free nuggets. <laughs> I was here gonna today. say there's a lot of gold um, here. But an adjustment we made on our LP Mama is I don't even know how to use the acronym now. We got to change it um, because we changed the A and the last A and the M. So LP Ma'am, I guess is what it would be, <laughs> um, because the last question we ask is about mortgage. And the reason we made that adjustment is because I noticed and observed a lot of agents struggle asking if they've been pre-approved. Hmm. They they struggle asking that question because we all have fear of rejection. Right. And that's easy for a client to get offended if you don't ask it the right way. And, and agents have a very uh, long memory. They can have one person that got mad and the next thousand people, they're hesitant to ask that question. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're hesitant and you're not confident in asking that question, that's going to come across on the phone. Yeah. And so what, what I did instead, of, of course, we role play around it. But what we did is we moved that to after the appointment. And so you set the appointment, you do all, you do location, you do price, you do motivation, you do, you're working with an agent, then you set the appointment. Hmm. But then you're like, oh, calm before we go. I'm just curious, will you be will you, will you be paying cash or do you need help obtaining financing for the home? I've already wow. set the appointment with you. Yeah. And now the hardest question for most agents, mm-hmm. I'm asking after you've already agreed to meet with me. Well, and also the way that you worded that is a help yes. type of a piece. It's not, hey, did you do your homework? Like, yes yeah. or no? You know, have you done an approval? And you I, should do it. I don't approval. know what the script says. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's worded a little better than that. It's wordsmith, right? But it, the, the, it's... Would you, yeah, do you need, will you be a uh, most seller? Here's, here's what it is, you're yeah, a buyer. Yeah. Most sellers in today's market we're gonna, we're, are going to want to know, will you be paying cash or you need help obtaining financing? Hmm. And just them going, oh, okay, uh, one of those two yep. options. Yeah. It's not me, I'm not asking. Mm-hmm. Most sellers want to know, mm-hmm. right? By the way, we're going to, this person that we're going to go look at this house, they're a seller, they're going to want to know this. Mm-hmm. And so, so what can I tell them, right? And now, and of course it's valuable for you, but it's also... I could go on a whole tangent on this because um, <laughs> agents will skip this question all in general because it's it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But it's important for you to know, and it's important for them to know. More yeah. importantly, are they looking at the right price point? Do they have credit repair they need to work on? Mm-hmm. Do they know what price point they can afford? Do they know what loan type? Like you can spend a waste a lot of time with people mm-hmm. for their time yeah. and your time by not having that done up front. Yeah. Now, if their credit's really bad, you might find okay, we we toured 15 houses, found out that they're not appro- they're they can't be approved for anything yep. right now. But um and like you said, that's not even serving them well. Uh, so looking it as this is me helping them and also 100%. let me word it in a way that shifts shifts it uh so it's not all on me and uh it comes from a place of helping. 100%. At, at the end goal is right, like it's not manipulation because it helps them in their mm-hmm. journey. But I sometimes you have to wordsmith things so that you can truly help them. Yes. Right. And so um, there, there's a cool hack. But scripting is so important. And guys, you have to script and role play every single day. Right. You have to. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
I was we were just on a call with one of our coaches, Coach Pipes, mm-hmm. um, right before this podcast, and he said um, he was in a uh, a sales training, and it was Barry Bonds's dad was in the training because Barry Bonds's mom used to be a real estate agent, and so she attended one of his trainings. Kind yeah. of a funny story, um, and and Coach Pipes was talking to Barry Bonds's dad and said, "Hey, I'm just curious, does Barry still practice?" And he said, of course he does. He's like, why? He's like one of the greatest hitters of all time. Yeah. Right? And he's like, well, he doesn't practice because he needs to learn. He practices so he can stay sharp, stay at the top of his game. Hmm. And like, that's just a different perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it, it really was an aha for me to look at it from a different perspective. I understand the importance, but I've never understood it from that perspective, like a pro athlete mm-hmm. that is already at the top of their game. They don't practice because they're learning a new technique with their swing. Mm-hmm. They're learning so their swing stays sharp. Yeah. Are you are you role playing so that your skills stay stay sharp? Because your role play, the better you are on the phones, the more money you're going to make in this business. Period. Mm-hmm. Right. You have to role play. Um, in addition to that, what is your role play and your scripting around after you set the appointment? Like, how many? What is your appointment set to met ratio? What is your met to sign ratio? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many things that we could dive into that probably would be more podcasts in the future. Once we, maybe we can talk about just some of those gaps Mm -hmm. um, and kind of ways to, to narrow those gaps and improve those. Because if you're setting a hundred appointments a year and you can improve by 5% in a set Mm -hmm. to met ratio, you're meeting with five more people. That could be five more closings with the same amount of work. Yeah. Right. Like I think we underestimate the, 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 the power of those gaps sometimes. Um, So back to practice, role play every day, do it as a team, make it fun, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're getting ready to do again is we did a, it's March Madness, right? It's, I guess it's over now, but, um, we did a March Madness style objection handling role play. Mm. We did it offsite. We took a big whiteboard and we just, we did it tournament style. It's Colin versus Matt. Yeah. It's Bob versus Sue. Right. And we'd have one objection. It's the same objection for those two people Mm -hmm. that they draw from a hat. Right. And one of them goes outside and they handle the objection that, and then the other person comes in, so they don't hear, they can't cheat, mm-hmm. they don't know what it is, and the team votes. Who handled it better? Wow. It makes it fun, right? It makes it encouraging. Yeah, it's, yeah. You, we're all enhancing our skill set. We're all learning from each other, um, and it makes it fun and entertaining, right? So just get creative with it. Like, mm-hmm. of course, we don't do that every day. No. Um, but that is but something that we do to re- rejuvenate role plays. It doesn't have to always be a slog. There's a new way yep. to, to approach it. But, yeah, every day I'll see agents out here just in the lobby talking back and forth, practicing their skills, like you're saying, honing, sharpening continuing to improve agents that have been here forever that I'm like, why are they? And it's like, oh, yep. because they're continuing to sharpen that. And and I say this respectfully, but it's the truth. You've noticed it too. Mm-hmm. Did you hear what Colin just said? Listen to that closely. He said, as a videographer and a, a member of our marketing department that's never sold a house, mm-hmm. he's w- observed people that are continuously at the top of our leaderboard mm-hmm. participating in role play, probably more so than anyone else. Mm-hmm. And your first question was, well, why are they doing it? Yeah. They're, they're already on top. Yeah. That's why they're on top. <laughs> you want to be on top of a leaderboard? You want to have that consistent? Sharpen your skill set, right? 100%. Could say any better, honestly. <laughs> um, so I want to also talk about, um, I, want to, I want to plug a webinar that we did. So guys, we have a website now, allornothinginrealestate.com. Check it out. We did a webinar recently where we dove deep into scripts, dialogues, objection handlers. Um, we did a lot of a lot of uh, presentations. We did a lot of sales based stuff in a webinar. I think it went an hour and a half. We just kept people wanted more, so we just kept delivering. Um, there's a lot of tangible takeaways. There's scripts that you guys can get there after the webinar. Um, there's all kinds of values. So go to all or nothing real estate.com if you're interested to learn more there. All of that is there for you free of charge. Uh, but one of the appointments, one of the uh, scripts and dialogues that I would encourage you to get from that is the appointment setting dialogue. There's a massive, massive hole in follow-up in this business. And if you want to set more appointments, that is the script, that is the dialogue that does it. Because following up, the game has changed. It's no longer following up to follow up. If you say, hey, I'm just calling to check in, that's a dead phone call. You might as well not even call them. Hmm. You better provide value. And it takes you through a solid framework that you can provide like five, I think it's five key points of value in those conversations so that you're providing value in that relationship as a follow-up. And the whole point of the call is to set an appointment. Mm-hmm. Too many people get stuck in the follow-up hamster wheel and they're just, Hey, just checking in. And the con- they, they stop checking in cause they don't know what to say. Yeah. Right. So there's free resource for you there. That's phenomenal. Just 
right off the bat, that's like, well, that's gold. Because you would think, well, uh, don't I just call to check in, see how they're doing? And all right, thanks, bye. So sure, like, you <laughs> want them to know that you care and check in. But right. what if you could also give them a nugget of value? Mm-hmm. What if you could also remind them and ask them a question? Like one of the things of the script is, hey, Con, I know you were looking to buy in the Lake of the Ozarks in the springtime. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. Did you want to start the process or be moved in at that time? Hmm. I'm asking clarifying questions to zone in and yeah. help you process what you actually want so I can help you accomplish it. Mm-hmm. And then some of the value is a market update stat, mm-hmm. a story of another client that was in a similar situation that had success. Um, a new home was that are on the market, our off market properties, right? There's mm-hmm. just different value adds that we can have in that conversation. And then the whole goal after that is let's set up a 15 minute strategy session to build this plan for you. Yeah. Cause I want you to be in the Lake of the Ozarks mm-hmm. by springtime, just like you said. Well, a lot of those things they haven't even considered themselves They're like, oh, well, actually, I really would like to be there by springtime. I don't even know where the first step would be. Like, I got you. Let, let's <laughs> yeah. let's have a call. They, they 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 set the appointment for you. Yes. Right. Through that dialogue, through mm-hmm. that framework. Right. And so it, it's gold. 100 percent. All right. Where do you want to go next, Colin? Let's jump into plugging holes, identifying areas of weakness and how to take care of them. So I'm curious, Colin, uh, before I dive in, what does that mean to you from a from almost an outsider's perspective a bit? Like if, if we're doing a, a podcast on plugging holes in a real estate business and how that helped us have our best month ever, what does that mean to you? Yeah, uh, it's saying where uh, is our energy not being spent well? Um, uh, what's the ROI of the energy that I'm putting out on yep. a regular basis, that return on investment? Am I really spending all the time in the right places? Yes. Um, and when you start to identify that, um, you go, oh man, actually I'm spending a ridiculous amount of time on here. And what can I do to change that? Yep. And I like how you tied it to time. Uh, mm-hmm. It gives me an opportunity to talk about my time versus money exercise, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people will talk about the return on investment of money. Mm-hmm. I think your return on investment of time is way more crucial because I'm going to take you through a quick exercise. Yeah. Colin, Let's what is it. more valuable to you, time or money? It's time. <laughs> Most high used perform- to be money. <laughs> Most high performers realize that time is way more valuable than money. Mm-hmm. And here's here's a real life example. This also will help to gratitude and appreciation. Mm-hmm. So, Colin, if I told you if you if I told you that um, when you wake up tomorrow, I'm going to give you a million dollars, would you be happy? I'd be pretty. I'd be pretty stoked. You'd yeah. be ecstatic, right? Yeah. Could anything ruin your day? No. What if I made it ten million dollars? That'd be the best day of your life, right? Yeah. But what if I told you the only way that you could accept that is you don't wake up tomorrow? Ooh. So you're you're what you're telling me waking up tomorrow is worth more than ten million dollars to you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Why do we wake up pissed off? Why do we wake up disappointed? Why do we wake up stressed instead of appreciative because it's worth more than ten million dollars to us? Mm-hmm. It's a gratitude and also a realization of holy shit, each and every day is worth way more than money. Mm-hmm. So why don't we live life that way? Yeah. Right? If you're looking if each hour of my life is more precious than gold, how come I'm not treating it like that? Hundred percent. That was a quick Dr. Phil moment, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I like that. I don't know what that has to do with plugging holes, but that's <laughs> what it made me think of. Well, I mean, it, 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 it ties to the piece of with uh, these holes, what are you spending your time on? Because it could be very easy to call it, you know, plugging holes. If you've got a bucket with holes in it and you're trying to put out fires with a bucket that has yeah. giant holes, you're not going to be able to do very much. Yep. You're, and eventually that fire is going to take over. 100%. So look at those. Uh, so how do we go about when we've got those big issues? How do you generally go about that? Yeah, I think the first step is identifying the holes, right? You have to step back. You have to have a 30,000 foot view. You have to identify the holes in your business. Mm-hmm. Like the database management stuff was a step back moment. Let's look at the holes let's analyze this let's get my ego out of the way forget everything we've done get rid of the playbook and let's understand where is our bucket dripping water Mm -hmm. right where where are we leaking water either financial resources either time either inefficiencies whatever right so you have to be able to identify those holes database your lead sources your expenses Mm -hmm. your return on investment like if you haven't done that yet in this market change you better get with the program i don't Mm -hmm. care if you're an agent that has very little expenses that is something you should have audited 12 months ago Mm -hmm. so go back through and do that run your business like a business because there are people that are going to be out of the business that didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be smart. You have to be strategic. Um, One of the things here's, this is an anomaly, right? But one of the holes I recognized is that I see this market as a massive opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so some of the holes that we plugged was we doubled down on stuff that was working really, really well. Um, Like I have, I have reps of other uh, third party lead sources that know they have, they have free reign 
up to X amount of dollars, don't even ask. As soon as it's available, go get it. Because hmm. I know it's going to become available because this agent's going to be cutting that expense. Mm-hmm. I'm all in on growth. I'm all in on opportunity for my people. But one that was strategic. Yeah. Right? That was, I found a, I could cut a spot here. I could cut a spot there. I can see the opportunity that we are creating in the market that we're going mm-hmm. into. Right? And so, like, I, I think that's just a weird way to look at plugging holes is adding expenses. Yeah. But I think that that was an oppor- like that was an opportunity that we were able to mm-hmm. take advantage of. Like we we have upped our lead generation and marketing spend budget quite a lot in yep. this market downturn. And is it any secret we've had our best month ever? Mm-hmm. Right? Like it's it, it all goes hand in hand. Um, well, you're looking at those holes as opportunities yes. that you're saying. Well, hey, if this is a problem, if we could plug it, imagine how much more water we could hold, like how much more we could accomplish once this is taken care of. Yep. And and again, treat your business like a business. Let's go back to the actual holes because mm-hmm. um, they are all holes are opportunities. Yeah. Right. Like it, let's be let's be real about it. Um, if it's something that is can be improved, that's an opportunity to grow mm-hmm. instead of it being like, again, put your ego to the side. So say, no, I do that. Great. It can always be better. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so. You can either generate more leads from it, you can convert more, you can have more, whatever, right? There's always more you can do if that's what you want to do. Maybe you want to spend more time with your family. Maybe Mm -hmm. you want to have more of that time. There's things that you can do to plug the holes to create more time for yourself. There's always something you can do to improve. And I think we don't spend enough time, especially in this business, analyzing what those things are. Um, And so I think that's very crucial that you do that. Um, One of the things, too, is I talked about it earlier, but you need to know your numbers in this business. Mm -hmm. How many conversations leads to a closing? How many conversations, how many leads or phone calls lead to a conversation? How many conversations lead to appointments set? How many appointments set lead to appointment met? How many appointments met lead to an agency agreement signed? Mm -hmm. How many of those people that we get signed do we get under contract? How many of those under contract do we get closed? Mm -hmm. And you need to know ratios for each each of those. Because I did a cool exercise um, and I learned it from Dan Beer actually at an event. And it was, it was just a very, it was an eye opening moment for me because he says a lot of people will come up, stand up on stage and rah, rah. And they'll say, I'm going to improve my business. I'm going to double it, double it next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He said, which is awesome. And I love the gumption. I love the motivation. I love the, the inspiration and the, the, the belief they have in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I've done that before. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Right. Like I was that guy. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, we've done that we've done that yeah but if i would have had this framework it would have helped tremendously (laughs) um he said go through your numbers and go through each of those metrics and say if i can increase my lead generation by 15 Mm percent is that realistic so now i have 15 percent more opportunities Mm -hmm. now what if we can increase our our dials to conversation rate by 10 Mm percent by five percent by three percent what if i can increase this ratio to that ratio by three percent and at the end this little 7% here, this little 3% there, this little 8% there, doubled your business. Mm. Right? Yeah. So there, there's a lot of things that you can do to focus on that and find your holes. Here's a word of caution. Don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes. You can't plug all those holes at once. Mm-hmm. Find the biggest hole. Fill it. Make sure it's filled where it's not going to leak again. And then fill the next hole. Got so it. what we do is we find that biggest hole and we focus on it for 90 days. Mm. We give it a quarter time to yep. focus on it. Let's fill it. Let's make sure that it's not going to re-leak, mm-hmm. right? And now let's go to the next hole. So mm-hmm. let's improve that, that 3%, that 5%, whatever that percentage is that is realistic, but is also a big needle mover for our organization. Mm-hmm. Start there and one step at a time, yep. everything else will fall into place. I think that's phenomenal. Um, just as we mentioned earlier, focus on that 20% that's producing 80% of the results. Focus on the biggest issue one at a time. And just the focus the is a superpower a difference. Yeah. And as salespeople, we are terrible at it. Entrepreneurial spirit, salespeople, we always want that shiny object. If you can resist that temptation and you can get tunnel vision and zone in on one thing and use that spirit that you have to make that the best thing, mm-hmm. I promise you, your business will seek so many rewards. Don't fall for the shiny object. You can't. Yes, you're a superhero, but you can't do it all at once. Yes. You have to make sure that you're focusing on the right thing and going deep, not wide. Go deep on that that one thing that it is that you're working on so you can make sure that it doesn't re-leak. Mm-hmm. Right? Well said. Anything additional you want to mention on plugging holes? Want to jump to the next one? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Let's talk about action, right? So um, I, was on a, I was on a coaching call um, yesterday, and 
someone was asking, uh, what are what are the keys to success for an agent, right? And I just oversimplify things. I think simple simple is scalable, mm-hmm. and simple solves the complex. I learned that from my coach John Sheplack, right? Yep. It's always the simple things. And so if you can simplify it, it's easier to explain. It's easier to find the holes, et cetera, right? So I simplified it, and I learned this, right? This is me passing it through. I learned this at a private mastermind. There are three things that are massively important to your success in sales. Hmm. Action, skills, and a proven sales process. Do you have those three things nailed? What action do I need to take? Mm Mm-hmm. What skills do I need to develop? What sales process do I need to follow? You need to know what those are. And then anytime you're off track on your goals, I guarantee you one of those three is not hitting the metric. Hmm. You're either not taking enough action, mm-hmm. maybe not the right type of action. Mm-hmm. You're not converting at the rate that you should. means your skill set needs enhanced. Mm-hmm. Or you're not following the proven sales process properly. Like that's that's it. There is no other excuse in this business. We overcomplicate it. Well, if I had this other lead source, Mm -hmm. no, just get better at the leads that you have. Yeah. Convert what you have. Instead of waiting for that magic bullet, like let's get better at the stuff we can control and let's convert better. And it comes, it comes from those three things. Hmm. And so, um, I think with that being said, if I, if I look back to what led to success the last, in the last, last month, our best March ever would be the actions that we took. 90 days ago, funny enough. Hmm. I live in a 90-day world. If you can delay gratification, you can accomplish anything in this world. We have so much impatience, myself included, Mm -hmm. in this world that we live in. Technology, everything's in the palm of our hand. We live in an instant gratification society. If you can delay gratification, that's a huge key for success. So if you can realize the actions that I put in today consistently for a period of 90 days. I don't care if it's your health. I don't care if it's business. I don't Mm -hmm. care if it's phone calls. I don't care if it's a skill, anything. But you do it every day consistently for a 90-day period, and then you look up, the results will astonish you. Mm -hmm. What happens is we will do that for two days. We will do that for a week. Mm -hmm. We'll do that for a week and a half. And then we fall off because we don't see the results yet. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to our real estate business as an example. In December... We did this cool thing called Monday Mayhem. And we went out of the box, got uncomfortable because our market got just smoked, Mm -hmm. just absolutely smoked. Um, And what we did is we chose to take action with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I had a bunch of agents on the team that chose to participate in this. And we spent all day on Mondays, so four Mondays, Mm -hmm. going through a script and calling and we had a prospecting day. Instead of doing an hour a day, that day we did six hours. Right. And we did it as a group. We made it fun. Mm-hmm. We had a challenge. Again, if you're interested in that, you can go to all or nothing real estate.com. Uh, there's a free webinar where I broke down that process on how to set a hundred appointments in four days. Oh, by the way, did I mention while our market was getting demolished, we set a hundred appointments in those four days. Um, so there's a process there that I broke down that you can, you can steal in that webinar as well. Um, but that massive action that mm-hmm. we took 90 days ago produced the results that we had last month. Like those 100 appointments that we set, yeah. guess what they're doing now? They're buying or selling real estate, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it is that delayed gratification. It's a massive, massive difference. But I think what happens is, especially as, like we, let's go back to delayed gratification versus instant gratification. Mm-hmm. New Year's resolutions are a pet peeve of mine. I cannot stand them. If you got to wait for a new year to be a new you, mm-hmm. it ain't going to fucking work. It's not. Yeah. I'm sorry. You tell me someone that made a New Year's resolution and actually stuck with it. Mm-hmm. Find me one. Stuck with it all year. Yeah. It's like 0.01% or something like that. Because they give up. Because they're waiting on, I'm going to start my program on Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make more calls tomorrow. What are you doing right now? Mm -hmm. If it's important to you, drop what you're doing and do it. Mm -hmm. Be disciplined. Right? And so um, I just think that the instant gratification society has has tainted or poisoned Mm -hmm what actually gets us success. And I think you tie that into that's where the world we live in is mm-hmm. reality, right? I fall for the trap too. I'm not perfect. Um, but you tie that in with what the real estate market was the last three years mm-hmm. where it was literally a reactive real estate agent. Anyone could sell a house. Anyone could work with a buyer. Like the hardest thing to do was to pick which buyer you wanted to work with and get their offer accepted. Mm-hmm. That was the hardest thing to do the last three years in the business. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. It's the truth. 
right? Like there's people that were, what they were complaining about was I can't find a house for my buyer and they keep getting outbid. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest complaints. Like that's a pretty awesome place to live in as a real estate agent, right? Yeah. And so you tie that into the instant gratification world. Now as a salesperson, mm-hmm. that's that became your new normal. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to reset your mind and re- realize that that was not sustainable and that's not the market we're in now. Mm-hmm. And you have to put in that effort for a 90-day period of time to get the result. Mm-hmm. Not a, oh crap, they called me today, they want to buy a house today. Mm-hmm. Do we want to create, let's go back to database management. Do I want to create that? Of course I do. Yeah. I want to create all of that that I can. But that is unrealistic expectations for that to be the majority of your business. Mm -hmm. That is not a sustainable business model because by the time that they are ready to buy or sell real estate, they're in everyone else's database. They've looked on all these websites because that instant gratification society also means that they, the consumer, have the same access to information that you do. And they're going to research. They're going to look at reviews. They're going to look at videos. They're Mm going to look online at these portal websites. They are not just coming to you last minute and then you happen to get them. If you worked someone, here's here's an unpopular opinion. If you get someone that is bottom of the funnel, they come in as a new lead and they buy or sell real estate within the first 30 days, Mm -hmm. it is because someone else dropped the ball and follow up somewhere else. Mm. So you got that lead because of lack of follow up from someone else. Mm -hmm. That was not a freebie. That was not how you can grow a business. What you need to do is figure out how you can get them that lead earlier and be that follow up so they never become low hanging fruit for someone else. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that and you can build a, a business by design and you know what your next 90 days of closings looks like, yep. how much better would that life be as a real estate agent versus living day to day, hoping you get a new lead today? Nope, I don't need a new lead today because I've got eight appointments already scheduled this week. Right. Like I, I live this, Colin. This is this is real. When, before I started a real estate team, the reason I started a team I don't know if I've ever told this part of the story. The reason I started a team is because I had a phone call with the sweetest lady in the world that wanted to work with me to buy a house. And I told her, I'm so sorry, I'm booked for the next two weeks. Hmm. And she said, well, I, I want to see a house this weekend. I said, I would love to, but I'm working 12 hours Saturday, 12 hours Sunday, and I have no time throughout the week. I'm already booked. Mm-hmm. I'm scheduled. And she's like, well, honey, you're just too busy. I'm like, huh. Maybe I am. <laughs> right. And so yeah. I'm like, I need to create leverage. Yeah. Right. And so this stuff works, guys. All those people that I was working with, they were willing to wait. That lady mm-hmm. waited two weeks to work with wow. me because of the conversation that we had. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I think I may have leaned on someone to show her a house and it wasn't the right, whatever. Right. But right. the point is, is that this isn't theory. Mm-hmm. I've done this. And if you get back to that mindset, this market is going to be the biggest opportunity you've ever had in your life. Mm-hmm. Imagine being a real estate agent, knowing what your pipeline looks like for the next 90 days. You know who you're meeting with, when you're meeting with them, what price range you're looking at. They're pre-approved, when they're coming to town, when they're looking to sell, when they're looking to buy. Mm -hmm. You have all that planned out in advance versus working on accident on what comes into my pipeline today. Mm -hmm. Like have that mindset shift and that'll be massive for your business. That's huge. That's like the the whole 90 days side of things, just going, all right, if I implement all these things, I'd recap with all the tips that we put so far. Mm -hmm. If you start it tomorrow and you're like, this isn't working or I got the idea of it. No, put it through these 90 days of testing, like really go with the scripting side of things. You're like, ah, I didn't see, I'm not really seeing anything change Well, because you haven't done it for 90 days. You need time on task. Mm -hmm. You have to build that callus, build that muscle memory, 100%. Mm -hmm. And I guess the last thing I'd say about the 90 days is think 90 days from now. What's the market going to do? What's your business need? What does it need to look like in 90 days? So what are the things you can do today so that 90 days from now you're prepared? Don't don't work just for today. Work for 90 days from now. And that'll make the difference. I love it. All right, last part, skill set. Yeah, it's not important. (laughs) Who needs it? Who needs it? Um, So... Funny enough, I just, again, I was just off a coaching call with uh, one of my coaches, um, and he coaches the team as well. Coach Pipes is a team coaching call, and he drew three little circles. He said skills, standards, and strategies. I was looking for the third skills, one. It was processes. Standards. I couldn't think of an S for yeah, yeah. processes. <laughs> but it's skills, standards, and strategies. And he drew them in a circle where they're all combined, whatever that's called, right? Where they all combine, and that's how you get success. And so he asked the agents of those three, which one is the most important to your success? They're all important, mm-hmm. but which one is the foundation? Without it, the rest of the other two don't matter. He says, is it skills? Mm-hmm. 
No one raised their hand. He says the strategies. A couple people raised their hand. He says the standards. And the whole the whole team except for two people raised their hand. He said 100%. Without your standards, the rest of it doesn't matter. Hmm. And so our skill is important, sure. Yeah. But the skill set without the action, the skill set without the consistent work, the skill set without the delayed gratification mm -hmm. is not going to do you the service that you want. And so you have to have those standards. I wish I had my, my notes from his definition of standards because it was so great. Um, we'll share it on another episode, but it was something along the lines of is basically the non-negotiable things with yourself that you know you need to do that you're going to do regardless. What are those things? What are the things mm. that are non-negotiable in your life? Mm -hmm. Those are your standards. Like, and he asked some people and some yeah. people said, I'm not going to ever miss my son's basketball practice. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to cheat on my spouse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work out every day. I'm go Whatever those things are for me, it is I'm going to spend an hour of family time every day with my family. Mm -hmm. That's what's most important, right? Um, I have other standards too, but like it's what is that? St what is the standard in your life? Like yep. as an example, on 75 hard, there's a reason that I know I'm going to finish. Mm -hmm. It is a standard. It is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. No, it's I will finish yes. this. Yeah. But what, so what are your standards in your real estate business? Mm -hmm. Do you have a standard to prospect every day? Do you have a standard to lead generate every day? Do you have a standard to grow your skill set every day? Let's go back to those three items, mm -hmm. right? Do you have standards around the actions you need to take and hold yourself accountable to it? The skills you need to develop and you need to stay, even if you don't need to develop them, mm -hmm. you need them to stay sharp like Barry Bonds. Mm -hmm. And do you have a uh, standard around the proven sales process that has been developed for you to follow it consistently every single day? Mm -hmm. Like if your standards are tied around doing those three things, you are going to be successful in this business, period. Mm -hmm. The people that aren't are the ones that don't have the standards. <laughs> so have a standard around building skill set. How you build skill set is through scripting, is through role play. Mm -hmm. um, I also think a skill set that is kind of uh, missed in this business is uh, there's a lot of training on taking a lead, converting it to an appointment. There's not enough on once you meet with them, what do you do? Hmm. So I think it's also important that you train on presentations to represent the client, whether mm -hmm. you're looking for working for a buyer or a seller. That's a huge part. A presentation, you should be nervous. You should feel like you're getting ready to speak to a crowd, yeah. right? That's what a good presentation should feel like. Um, and then you also need to have a training system and a an accountability system around the skill of how do you show a home? Mm -hmm. How do you negotiate a contract? How do you, how do you do those salesy things that you need to do? Other than I think me as a leader, I found myself in this trap because I focus on I want you to set more appointments, more appointments, more appointments. Mm -hmm. Like it's all around phone scripting. It's all around those things, right? Which is great and it's a very crucial part of the business. Mm -hmm. But also, don't forget the presentations part because once you meet with them face to face, that's a representation of who you are. Yeah. Right. So make sure that you're representing properly. You're 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 wowing them with whatever it is that you're presenting to them. And then also, how do you show property properly? Mm -hmm. well, that's hard to say. Property properly. <laughs> how do you show property properly? And how do you um, how do you present yourself when you're on a listing presentation? Mm -hmm. What do you what what is your process you go through? Right. We have a pre listing process. We have different things that we built out that it just reminds me that we need to also have training and accountability and re education around those aspects of the skill set too, mm -hmm. because I think sometimes team leaders like my, myself and included undervalue those skill sets mm -hmm. because we're focused on the biggest gap, which is typically leads to appointment. Mm -hmm. But what about the appointment to the closing? There's a lot of skills there that need to be developed also. Well, and what you're saying is analyze those things on a, a regular basis. Look at what's working, what's not working, where can I improve? And then most importantly, what are your standards for those things? Are you saying, is this important to you? Like, are you making it a priority on a daily basis yep. to be better than you were yesterday? Because it doesn't matter what the exercise is, what the skill set is, is if you never do it. And are you coachable? Hmm. Are you mm -hmm. coachable? Or are you willing to be held accountable to it? Because if you're not coachable, you're a know-it-all, your ego gets in the way, and you won't allow your team to hold you accountable to it, your mentor, your coach, whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to work for you. Mm -mm. Know-it-alls don't make it in this business. I, 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 got, I understand it. I got the gist. I'm yeah. a good enough. I've got, I've got scripts down. You Dude, know, like, good enough is not good enough. Hmm. So good is the enemy of great. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be good or do you want to be great? If you want to be great, you Get take humble. the action, you humble yourself, you remove your ego, you learn the skill sets that's needed, and you follow that proven sales process. Mm -hmm. And you make that a standard in your life. 100%.
I think that pretty much covers it. Like if, if you were wondering what the secrets were for, if you're looking around, <laughs> you're like, man, why is the market so bad? How come I can't convert things? This, this works. And if you're doubting it, do it. 90 days. Give it a strong try because it's working. It's 100% working. And if if you're, I guess if you're writing off any of these things mentally, I don't need to do it, that, then um I, I challenge that. Go get a real that. job. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your new script. Would you like fries with that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, because you've given Is up. Is that too that harsh? Point. Maybe a little. <laughs> hey, it's I made it kind of joking and kind of serious. So yeah. if it offended you, it probably should. If it didn't, you laughed with me. So yeah. you're welcome. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to do, like recapping the episode as a whole? You no, want to mention, uh, I would. I would love your guys' feedback. This was uh, Con and I talked. We put this together last minute, and it was just a. I wanted to talk about what was relevant, what was yep. working, and um, a lot of these things I talk about mindset and leadership, and I think we did that a little bit. That's just my my wheelhouse, if you will. Yeah. But I wanted to get more tactical in this. It's hard in a podcast. There's no visual, um, but I'm just curious what you guys thought of this this framework of this. Let me know your thoughts. If you should have questions. I'm here to help, guys. Like I said, this is a movement to give back, so please don't hesitate to reach out. And as always, thank you so much for listening. This has been a privilege. It's an honor for me to get to do this. There's people that actually want to hear what I have to say, and I hope you got value from this. If you did, again, this is a movement to give back to the industry that has given so much to me. Please share this with a friend. Please share this movement, share this message, and um, let them know that Colin's great on camera. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're here to help you guys, so please don't hesitate to reach out, and thank you so much for listening. 